So Southampton have been relegated to the championship for the coming season. I mean, what do you expect when you appoint a manager who would rather touch himself whilst looking in a mirror than actually manage a football team? Really driving the standards, like everywhere being a pro standard. But despite the relegation, hope is not completely lost for the Saints. And if they do these things going into next season, they could well and truly bounce back. So first, the appointment of Russell Martin is an incredible one in itself. A manager who focuses his play style around playing progressive and attractive football, whilst also maintaining domination over the side that they're playing against, with vast majority of possession being held. Alongside this, the playing style that he does bring, like I said earlier, the attractive, progressive, possession-based playing, I think could be massive for pulling players in and retaining some of the lone players. For example, someone such as Nathan Teller. I think Nathan Teller needs to be at the very top of the Southampton retain list. If Southampton can't get near the 20 million fee which is reported that they would want, then I think Teller needs to be a must keep for the Saints. Teller has proven in the championship and is guaranteed to score goals in a championship side. He already won the league itself last season with Burnley playing brilliant football which coincides with a mindset that could be carried on to Southampton by Russell Martin. Therefore, if he can be kept at the club, he would be an incredible asset going to the next season as a result of his ability and experience in the division. The only issue they may have is keeping Burnley's hand off one of their star loanees as they look to build a Premier League side. And on top of that, the potential of Premier League football could be massive for one of Nathan Teller. You'd think he really wants to push on his career after obviously see such an electric season last term. Now another lone player which may be more likely to be staying at the club, Will Smallbone. After a solid season on loan in a very, very inconsistent Stoke side, Smallbone managed to get 8 goal contributions in 43 games from the Stoke City midfield. The Saints youngsters made it very clear on what his desires are going into next season which are to carry on playing football. But he has also suggested that a summer that would see him staying at Southampton would be ideal for his career. But realistically, Smallbone's not an incredible midfielder, someone that's going to come in and tear up the vision entirely which someone like Nathan Teller possibly could but with the players such as Romeo Lavia, James Ward-Prowse obviously going to be leaving for massive price tags it's going to be massive for Southampton if they can retain some players in depth as their midfield is going to be taking a massive hit going into next season. I mean as much as they're going to be making a ton of money this summer they're also going to be losing so many vital players so just even having the depth of Smallbone even if he doesn't start could be massive. But enough of lone players that will be coming back to the club this summer we need to be looking at some players that Southampton need to be bringing in and making them Saints. So at the point of recording, the director of football and Russell Martin have not actually started working at this current time. However, it's pretty obvious that they've already been patched up and they're going to be working at the club almost immediately. But still, as a result of that, it means that there's not too many rumours going around and there's not too much business actually being done at Southampton at the current moment. However, in the coming weeks, it's definitely going to happen. However, one player blatantly already on the Saints radar is 19-year-old Carlos Borges. I've definitely butchered that. With Sulemana looking like he could be definitely departing Southampton this summer, we're especially bringing in a very solid fee. However, that still means that Southampton are definitely going to have to find a replacement winger going into the championship. And I don't think they should look any further than the Man City under-21 winger, Borges. This season, he scored 21 goals and picked up 11 assists in the Premier League 2. The 19-year-old is incredible in one-on-one -on -one situations with his lightning base and crazy on-ball ability. This creates isolated situations which allow him to cut in and shoot on his stronger left foot, which in this has caused him to average 1.06 goals per 90 minutes this season. Hey, Erling Haaland. He's coming for your pal. So, you know, let's, let's not take the piss here. And now he's been at Man City for nine years since signing from Sporting Lisbon. The Portuguese man will definitely be looking at a loan away. You mean thinking at the age of 19 years old, you really want to be getting consistent first team football. And obviously, he's not going to get that at the treble win inside Manchester City. However, I can't see him going to Southampton on a permanent deal, as obviously at just 19 and with so much potential blatantly there, you'd think that he really will want to eventually push into the City first team if it's possible. <laughs> Moving on to the next target and into midfield here, yeah, we have a player that could massively strengthen the Saints midfield as they look to maybe get in a possible combined 100 million as they sell Romeo Lavia and James Wall Prowse. It's Motten Hojolmund. Lads, there's, there's some of these names, man. I can't do it. The Saints already an £8.5 million bid rejected in January of this season, so they really want to go and get the light midfielder. They're going to have to splash out some big, big money, especially for a championship size. But as I said before, with the money from Ward Prowse and Romeo Lavia and a big Paula Nauchu and Sulemana, they're going to be absolutely rolling in it. The midfielder from Denmark can operate in all positions of midfield, but is primarily defensive midfielder. He sits in the top 1% for interceptions in the Serie A and top 16% for tackles in that division. Which in a league like the Championship when tackles like this... 
happen almost every single week. Someone with a bit of fire would be absolutely perfect. However, being realistic, I can't see the money, which is probably going to be pushing up to 15 million this summer, being spent on one individual player. Yes, I think we're going to have a lot of money, as I said earlier, with so many departures, but I don't think they're going to have the limits to spending that much money on one singular defensive midfielder. Another name certain around St. Mary's is Matt Grimes. Now, this isn't one that just me thinks should happen. It's more so one that is almost definitely going to happen. Grimes was one of Russell Martin's most impressive players whilst at Swansea, and a move is incredibly obvious. Another midfielder, which, as I said earlier, the Saints are going to need to increase their midfield depth due to departures. A midfielder like Grimes is perfect for the Martin style with his progressive passing from deeper areas of the pitch. Grimes had a progressive pass accuracy of 79.28% this season, which is absolutely mental considering how many passes he plays, not just from deep areas, but all over the midfield. For example, in 21 slash 22, he completed over 2,300 passes in the championship, the most out of any of England's top four tiers. I see the transfer of Grimes to Southampton as incredibly likely due to how integral he is to the Russell Martin system, which in itself is massive pulling power, not just for Grimes, but also for reasoning for Southampton to go get him, if that makes sense. Now, another Swansea man, which is obviously going to be linked due to the fact that Russell Martin was at Swansea, however, not one that I really think should definitely happen is Joel Perot. I'm not going to go into too depth because I really don't think this is likely due to the massive price that's going to be whacked on him. He's more likely to go to a lower end Premier League club or somewhere abroad than further from the Championship, but Perot would obviously be an absolutely immense signing. This season, Perot scored 19 goals for Swansea in a side that, um, to say the least, underachieved. So obviously he would be a brilliant signing to continue his run with Russell Martin, who obviously knows how to use him. I mean, if he's scoring 19 goals in a side that finished here, he's obviously got a bit of talent. But to be honest with you, the be-all end-all is keep as many players as they can because this Southampton side didn't go down because they didn't have the good enough quality like we've seen teams before in the past, such as Burnley, who only had really five players that were Premier League level. This Southampton side is actually full of incredibly Premier League worthy players, just managed by some of football's most horrific gaffers. If players like Alcaraz and Co stay next season, it is going to be an absolute breeze for the team on the South Coast. But still, if they do depart, I'm still very confident Southampton are going to have a very, very good recruitment policy and will get in some very good players from more foreign leagues for cheap prices, almost similar to what Burnley did this season. But let me know where you think Southampton will probably finish this season. And make sure you go check out Reese Barrett on Twitter for this amazing thread which allowed me to see some of the players that I mentioned in the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.